Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome along to WD18, the Watford fan channel. Hope you're all doing fantastically well on this Sunday evening. It's been a bit of a while actually since uh, Watford played on Friday night against Leeds in that in that 2-2 draw in Tom Clebley's first game at Vicarage Road as interim head coach. We're going to get straight into that on today's stream. Myself, Jacob Colshaw, Sam Yuko, Charlie Zazera. Make sure as always to leave a like on the video, subscribe to WD18 turn your post notifications and if you're listening on audio drop us a review as well it's massively appreciated and let us know what you think in the comment section below I think we should probably have the final word on the WD18 Cup though Charlie it was uh, it was an amazing day last Saturday at West Arts Sports Club it started off at West Arts it ended in Pop World that's all that needs to be said on it really uh, Charlie for people who missed it how much did we raise what happened on the day did it go the way you wanted it to talk us through it yeah, your dad in a in a pop world. No, it was it was an amazing day. Um, I don't know about you guys. I had a bit of a kind of a bit of a come down from it. Like middle of next week, it was such a big build up, and it was such a high. It was such an amazing day, seeing everyone turn out. Everyone was in good spirits. Football went well. We only had a bit of hailstones and rain, um, and then yeah, see the money we raised over six grand. Um, and then, yeah, just speaking to loads of like-minded Watford fans, getting Clebs down was great, like the cherry on top. So, yeah, absolutely loved it. Yeah, amazing day. And a huge shout out to Tom Cleverly as well, because when we asked him, he wasn't the interim head coach, he was the under-18 coach, and no one would have expected. Uh, well, I think some people did expect him to come in at some point, but maybe not as soon as it happens. And for him to still stick by his word and come along, give two hours of his time, which we must just say as well, him, Armin Kavai, Damien Lathrop as well, Absolute legends for coming down. Really, really good day. And if you did miss it, uh, I had a quick chat with Clevs on the day, sort of his first week or so in the job, and he, he gave some really nice answers. So make sure you do go and check that out. Sam, how was the day for you, buds? It was, uh, we, we were, Charlie was kind of the man marking everybody. Me and you were keeping, trying to keep everyone happy. But did you have a bit of a come down as well? From yeah, I did. Yeah. <laughs> I can't lie. Um, my voice is a bit gone, not just from the Leeds game, but. Yeah, I was, I've been ill all week, to be honest with you. I think it was almost just the build-up, everything went into it. You can still see the bags under my eyes, to be honest with you. But, um, yeah, it was an unbelievable day. Um, as I said on the vlog that, we, that I did as well, it was one of the best things I've done. I'm sure you two would both agree as well. Seeing what we've done for the local community is really, really special. It was great to see James Lindsay down there from Hertfordshire Mind, but also for Watford Hospice, it was really special to see such a big impact that we've made. And... Look, what, I, what I'm most proud of is that things are tough at the moment to be a what fan on the whole, I would argue. A lot of division within the fan base, a lot of arguments you see, particularly on social media. But the fact we were able to bring everyone together just for a few hours was a really, really special thing. Well said, mate. Well said. And a huge shout out to everyone who came down as well. Uh, I have to say that because we had the 10 teams on the day and there was a lot of people that came up to me. I know Sam, Charlie said they watched the channel. I know that if you were there in the live chat, let us know. We'll give you a shout out because there were so many people that, that came up to us and, and said hello. They watched the channel and came down just to, even if it's half an hour for the whole day uh, and, and all the donations as well. We really, really do appreciate it. That's probably the last time I'm ever going to mention the WD18 Cup, maybe for another year. Fingers crossed, you never know. Charlie, Charlie doesn't want me to mention it for a while because there's been a lot of planning and a lot of talking. He, he, he was fuming as we were clearing up, I was going, so Charlie, I think next year what we should do, and Charlie was going, I'm not having this conversation <laughs> now. Do you know what that, the equivalent was for that? It's like when you have the final game of the season, you've won the league, and then you're thinking of the first game of next season, you haven't even celebrated yet. Sam, unbelievable. <laughs> this is what separates him from the rest. Anyway, <laughs> Watford 2 leads to. Uh, it was... It was really a bit of a weird one for me, Charlie, because I felt first half Watford were, were great. I think when we were coming into this, no one really expected Watford maybe to lay a glove on Leeds just because of the quality of the two sides. That's no disrespect to us, but Leeds, if you look at their squad, it is levels above us. Uh, you look at some of the individual players they have as well. The form they're in at the moment was was really, really really strong. And a lot of Leeds fans came away from uh, Friday night thinking, you know what, we'll take a point and get out of there. I would have taken a point at the start. Are you happy with the point now reflecting and watching the game on Friday? Mm, just about, just about. But I think, again, the only reason I'm frustrated is just because Leeds were not at the level at all, were they? Um, and that first half performance, I thought was absolutely outstanding. Um, you saw the, the, the formation, the change of shape with three at the back either a 3-4-3 three, three or a 3-4-1-2. Um, and just how we played in that first half, really 
aggressive, really kind of taking the game at them, kind of everyone done their job and it was a joy to watch. And I felt like maybe we should have scored more than two in that first half. There was a moment where another really good press from Yasser Espria. Um, Dennis could have had a better control to finish, but yeah, that first half, I don't know, for me, I thought it was probably one of the best first halves of the season. Shame that we could have maintained it, but I'm sure we're going to get into it. Yeah, it's it's, it's a weird one, isn't it, Sam? Because it's still, we haven't won at home since November, but there was a lot of encouragement and a lot of positive to be taken from that performance. I guess my question to you is, is that two points dropped the one point gains? Oh, it's, a, it's a point gained and I'm absolutely delighted with it. If you offered if you offered it to me before kickoff, I'd have 100% taken it. And I know Leeds equalised quite late on, but I thought on the whole, the performance levels were absolutely excellent. That first half was, I'd argue, forget one of the best halves of the season. I thought it was our best half of the season. All round, it was an absolutely fantastic performance. Yes, uh, Somerville's goal, we, perhaps Kiemi could have closed him down, but on the whole, I thought we nullified Leeds completely. And, we made them absolutely terrified, to be honest with you. Um, our press was really, really good. Absolutely nailed it tactically. And and the, we'll come on to the atmosphere of Kira Drode. But something that Tom Cleverley spoke about in his press conference was that we can't the, we can't rely on the fans to carry us. We have to get give something on the pitch so the, the atmosphere gets going. And I thought exactly that. I think the fans saw that the players were up for it and that sort of performance was replicated in the stands as well. I think the second half, yes, you could say that, you know, we, we perhaps could have done a bit better holding off, but I thought the effort levels were still there and I don't think there was anything we could have done differently, to be honest with you. When you've got players like Somerville in the championship or you're bringing on some of the players that they do, I don't think there's much that you can do. And what I'm even more impressed with as well, this might seem like a small thing, but Leeds equalised on the 85th minute. So we had five minutes to go from that point there and then five minutes of stoppage time where it was all Leeds. We were absolutely exhausted and we still managed to hold on for a point. So I'm delighted with it, to be honest with you. And I think that goes down to the best performance of the season. Sam says best performance of the season, Charlie. And there's been comments in the live chat saying it was the best half for sure that first half. Is it better than QPR on the opening day of the season? I think it is based on the opposition. I thought in terms of the way we executed our game plan was really, really good. Uh, against the quality Leeds team. Yes, they had injuries. Yes, they weren't full strength. But I think, although you could argue, yeah, OK, it was four goals against QPR and we blitzed them in that first game. If you look at the quality of opposition, there's levels to it, in my opinion. Which do you reckon is better, opening day or that Leeds first off? The only thing, and I totally agree with everything that Sam said, is just that second half, we were we were right under the cot. And I don't think Leeds had that many, like, guilt edge chances. But... I can get some stats up in a bit. Like, I'll get the momentum bar up in a bit, but... <laughs> we didn't, we didn't oh, have I miss a, that so much, baby. <laughs> we, we, didn't, we, didn't have a sniff, we didn't have a sniff in the second half. And I think Emmanuel Dennis going off just completely changed the game. And I think we had they had about 70, 75% possession in the second half. And there's no way you're going to keep a Leeds team out. So, yeah, I don't know. Should we rely on one player? Like, we look at the two different teams. Daniel Fart made me laugh. He was moaning about all the injuries they had, but they were still able to bring on Joel Perot, where we've got kind of Rayovic on the, on the bench. So, yeah, I'm really pleased with the performance and all. Um, I just think that second half, could we have done something different tactically? What, what, I want to talk about Tom Cleverley because I thought what he'd done tactically was unbelievable. unbelievable but... Tactically, in the second half, bringing Kone, I don't know if that killed us a bit. Um, I, d I don't know. But, yeah, I believe we can't take anything away. I think to a man, every player was great. I just think that second half, we were dominated and I think it was only a matter of time, really. Should we go through the sort of starting lineup from from Watford? Um, because, as, as Charlie said, we're going to get into sort of the tactical breakdown from Tom Cleverley. But if we go through it from, from back to front, Daniel Batman in goal, Sierra out of Porteous, Pollock making up a back three, with Ryan Andrews and Jamal Lewis as our two win backs in midfield, Tom Daly Bashiru uh, with Edu Kiembe, Esprit slightly in front of those guys, and then Bio and Dennis up front. That change of shape, Sam, sort of three, four, one, two, or five, three, two, however you want to see it. I mean, out of possession, it was a five, three, two. I have to say, when I saw it and I saw it in the first five minutes, I was like, this actually makes a lot of sense for the team that we have. I'm surprised mm -hmm. that maybe we haven't seen a back three deployed this season before under Val, unless there's another game that I've missed off. But we, we, at home, we played with a back three 
and we were we were terrible. I think we spoke about it afterwards, and I got a screen grab up calling it the the donut formation because it was just gaping holes in the middle. So I was a bit kind of apprehensive when we went to the three, but I think the way we played it with the two Tom Deli and Kayembe in front was was pretty spot on. Yeah, agreed. And what, what was it though, Sam? About maybe this, if we go through that that lineup as well, that first half. What was it that made it that best half of the season for you? What was it in particular about Watford's performance? Hmm, yeah, when the lineup came out, I actually thought it would be a four-three-three. I thought it would be the same shape with Sierra Alta in the six, the Chilean Perlo, as Charlie's calling him this season. Um, yeah, I, I just thought we looked so comfortable in the shape. Um, I do think now thinking about it, having seen it in action, because I know people have spoken about it. I'd argue that some of our defenders are probably better suited to the back five, particularly Matty Pollock. I thought he was protected a lot more and I thought he looked really, really comfortable alongside uh, Porteous and Sierra I thought Sierra who also actually saw some pace from him, which I haven't seen in a couple of years since the promotion season. I thought he looked really, really comfortable in that back three as well, which was unbelievable. So I think it was that. I just think it was perhaps a change um, really... I don't know. I, th I think players quite like sometimes having something new there um, and, and trying out new formations, particularly when there's less to play for on the line, because they just look so much more comfortable. And then I know I just spoke about the defenders, but I thought because of that, I know Kiambi struggled, I think, at points in, in the game. I also thought he did well at points in the game, but I thought Tom Daly Bashiru was absolutely excellent. I'd argue that that was one of his best performances in the Watford shirt. And then we left Bio and, and Dennis really to do the work up top. Um, I'd argue as well, Bio had his best performance in a Watford shirt as well. I thought he was absolutely excellent. And we saw what Bio can be really, really good at as well. Um, so I just thought that what, what the five at the back did was it allowed players to really not just be comfortable with where they are, but express themselves on the ball as well. So, yeah, I, I was really, really happy with it. Something I want to pick up on as well before we go through sort of the moments in the game as well, because it's happened now in the last two home games. Do we reckon it's Watford's decisions? We don't know who wins the coin toss. Do you reckon it's our decision to kick towards the rookery in the first half? Because we know that we seem to start games slowly this season, but it just seems that when we kick towards the rookery, we do seem to start that bit faster. Do you reckon it's our decision? It's an interesting point because Charlie said in our group chat, sort of, was that our decision to turn us and face the rookery? And normally, in years gone by, there's like this sort of collective groan from the rookery going, oh, God, first half facing towards us. Because we're so used to the second half going towards the rookery. I thought it actually made a lot of sense, to be honest, because I felt it set the tone for our performance. Now, some people said at home that the atmosphere didn't come through maybe as well as it did in the stadium. I don't know. Obviously, Charlie, you're probably best to comment on that. From my perspective, Sam, and I don't know if you agree with this, I felt when we went, I think after the Dennis goal, that was probably the one of the best buzzes I've felt in Vicarage Road this season, maybe since the start of the year when Andrew scored against Birmingham, that was up there. It was like a real sort of buzz and like sort of everyone kind of rallied together and there was a really strong collective sort of, let's do it for Tom. I think that was sort of the vibe. Let's make sure he gets, gets a result, oh. at least we put in a performance. Jacob, I started to feel that buzz when, um, when Leeds equalised and collectively there was almost like this roar of let's get behind Tom. And I feel like that that is your... That's our responsibility in a way as, as supporters. I'm not saying that supporters are responsible for what we see on the pitch, but I think what was clear there is that we can have a proper influence on what goes on uh, performance-wise. Because previously, and I do think under Val as well, if that had happened, I think you've seen seats start emptying for half-time, people going inside to get their pints early, or even groans um, a lot more about the about the goal that we conceded, even though it was a great finish. So I think the fact that we've able, we're, we were able to get behind the team and I think because of that, we saw an instant reply where we went 2-1 up again. I think shows that as fans, we can make a huge difference at Vicarage Road. Charlie, just back onto that 3 4 one, two. I know you're a man who loves a formation. Uh, what did you make of it? Were you a fan? Yeah, like I said, I was a bit apprehensive at the start just because of that Middlesbrough game. But yeah, I thought it worked really, really well. I think Matty Pollock, if you look at his previous games at Aberdeen, he played um, as part of a back three. Um I was worried about that area with Pollock and Andrews up against Somerville and him finding gaps, which he obviously did a few times. But look, you can't take away anything from that goal, really. Like That's an absolute stunner. Um, Sir Alta, just great box defender, but good on the ball. That burst of pace Sam mentioned, he'd done, a, he'd done Patrick Bamford out of nowhere. 
Uh, he just mm. said, had the skates on. Couldn't believe it. I, have to say, I, was, I was worried he was going to pull his hammy. I was <laughs> me. Oh, he's going to he's going to go clutch his hammy in a minute. Yeah, Porto. I think last two games under Clevs has been great. Um, temperament's been good, but and in the he same breath, he's he's gone through and gone really hard on tackle when appropriate, getting a bit of man as well, which is Pete Porto. So enjoyed that. I think Charlie just on Porto before we carry on. I think what's been good is last two games. His game's been simplified. I know you quite. I think you quite liked it a couple of times under Val where he was told to man mark even if he going really high up the pitch. But I think what that led to was just gaping holes because he'd be way overly aggressive. But I think Clevs has just simplified his game and, and given him told him to do what he's good at pretty much. Sorry for jumping in. No, you're but, absolutely right. I think you're spot on there. And I think it goes back to what we said about Pollock as well in that back three. Because I remember there was this same conversation about, um, this is really niche, but do you remember when Harry Maguire was playing in the back three? And then they put him in a back two. And everyone said, well, God, Maguire looks amazing in a back three. And then you put in a back two. But I think basically what you get is with Sierra out of Porter's Pollock is they just cover each other a bit more. You don't have to be as aggressive with the press. It's kind of just, as you say, Sam, it simplifies their role quite a lot. Sorry, Charlie, but I just think that difference, you can tell it immediately, particularly someone like Porteous, who was playing the left of a back three as well, which is on his weaker side because that would have normally been Hoot's position. Yeah, I think, although we talked about the shape there and what Sam said about simplifying his game, I think that's what the thing I've been most impressed about cleverly. He's identified all the players and he's just got the maximum out of all of them, kept it sing simple and looking at all their super strengths. We saw Ryan Andrews in the first half really advance, getting crosses in, getting shots in. Jamal Lewis potentially had his best game in a Watford shirt. You see how advanced he was, being a real threat on that wing. Um, and he just said Kayembe and Tom Deli screen that back three and then let the um, let Espria, Dennis and Bayo play up front. I, when I was looking at like, like the average positions, I didn't know if it was a free and sometimes I felt Bayo was quite wide left, maybe in the second half. Um, and the reason I said I thought it was a free because I thought when Dennis went off, I thought Kone was really, really advanced. And I thought it would have just made a lot more sense if Kone dropped back into the midfield. But it kind of felt like Kone was really advanced in that second half, which he struggled with. But I think Tom referenced it in his interview afterwards about playing in a two with uh, Dennis and Bayer, who who I thought were great, both of them, really. Um, so, yeah, I thought the shape was really, really encouraging. Bold for Tom to change it, do you know what I mean? Um, and it, it worked really well. And I think the first half, we, we absolutely battered Leeds, really. It's easy. Stretch- Sorry, mate. I was just saying, is that a stretch? We battered them. I thought we were far better. We were much the better team. I don't, maybe batters a stretch. I think probably like we were in control of the game, I thought. like I felt we had Leeds exactly where we wanted them in that respect. Uh, I know, as I say, it goes back to what I said at the top of the show. A lot of Leeds fans was saying online that they were they were happy to get out of there with a point because at large periods it was 2-1 and as Sam said it, it was, wasn't for the 85th minute. It could have been a different story. So Charlie, I wanted to tee up some of the stats uh, from yesterday. We've got the average positions on here. If you can't uh, see on audio, basically Charlie highlighted some of the average positions from, from the game uh, on Friday night. It was a 3-4-3 or 3-4-1-2 in possession and a 5-2-3 out of possession. Kiembe and Deli Bashiru, as you can see in 39 and 24, um, did brilliantly in the two, but but Charlie mentioned on his tweet about about Bayo there. Charlie, do you want to maybe just expand on what you what you meant on that that tweet? Sorry, I'll just get that back up quickly. No, I've, sorry, I've got it up. If you want me to, and I can kind of move it around with players. But just um, yeah, I just thought that like Bayo was like you can see here if people are listening audio, but if you look at his heat map, he was absolutely everywhere and just in that shape. I think they were quite fluid the front three really. Like at times, I thought Bayo was wide, but. I thought they were quite fluid. You can see Espria here, a bit more towards the left. Dennis a bit more from the right, and you saw that second goal. But I just thought Bayo was was brilliant in the game and didn't stop running, like high pressing. Um, obviously got his goal, which I thought was a really, really good finish. And I just think he kind of epitomised like the new system. And I think Watford fans have been crying out for two up top. So mm. I think if we can get Dennis and Bayo fit for the rest of the season, that'd be amazing. Um, while I have got the stats up here, I'll just talk about the kind of the momentum bar if anyone's yeah, interested. Yeah, boy. <laughs> Honestly. So we, we, can see here, uh, we can see here first half how much we had the better of it. Um, and then second half, that this was my biggest issue really, was that second half where, go away clock, that second half where Leeds were pretty dominant, especially in the final stages. So interesting first half, we, we dominated second half, they did. Um, let's just go down and 
And then looking at the stats again, a game of two halves really, but first half, more shots, more shots on target, more possession, which us to have more possession against a team like Leeds, I think is really impressive. Um, mm. More X, higher XG, six corners. Matty Pollock getting his head on a couple of those with a good so. effort. I think that was something that we worked on. More big chances, more shots from outside the box. It's a really good first half. Um, I guess we should talk about the goals and then really talk about the second half. Um, but you can see the contrast in stats of second half. They had a higher XG, 77% possession for them. More shots, more shots on target. Um, so should we talk about the goals and then what, why the game changed? Sounds good. Let's go through them in, in chronological order, Sam. So, so Bio's uh, goal to start with. That was <laughs> when the ball went up and Bio, he's coming onto it. And I thought, Bio, just please hit the target. And it's a goal. <laughs> because I thought he was, to be honest, my initial thought was when it went up, I thought he was going to head it. But then actually, it was a really nice technique to put to put his foot through. But yeah, Sam, talk us through that that first one, Bio opening the scoring. And, and as as Charlie mentioned about his performance, a goal that, that his performance deserves. <laughs> yeah. Um, God, it was so long ago now, the game, it feels like, trying to think back to it now. Um, Kiambi picked up the ball in transition, didn't he? Um, and it was a really, really good bit of midfield work from, from Edu. Um, I was actually, we're having this conversation around where I sit uh, in the eighteen eighty one about who our player of the season has been, because almost we've had quite a few sort of streaky players throughout the season, rather than someone who's been consistent throughout. And I'd actually argue that Edu probably just edges it. He didn't have his best game the other night, but it's moments like that where I think he's really improved this season. Player of the season? Oh, I I, think that's, that's strong, Sam. Conversation for another time, I suppose. No, um, no, no. We stay up. We've, mate, we, uh, you, what, what time are you knocking off? Quarter past. Who <laughs> <laughs> would, would you both go for? Probably Wesley Hoot for me. Yeah, it's got to be Wesley Hoot, I think. Wes. Do, you see what, do you see what I mean, though? Because in previous years, there's been players who have taken it for the whole season. I feel like this year we've had players who have been good for sort of six weeks and then dropped off a bit and then come back in. And it's I not think been a consistent. Really, yeah, I, I know what you mean. Because like at one point, we were saying probably Ben Hamer deserves it because he went yeah. on a run. Good performances, then gets dropped out of the team. Martin, the the Martin, Martin. The start of the season. Martin, the start of the season. I think Ken went through a really good run I think Tom delhi has been better than Kayembe this season. Wow, the hot That's takes a big hot take. out tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I love, I love, oh, sorry, Charlie, go on. Why was that? Well, I just think Tom Delhi, whenever he's played, even like, I just think he's been excellent. He's really showing like real progression. Um, and yeah, I just think he's been more consistent, whereas Kyambi sometimes out of possession doesn't look as good. But I just think Tom delhi has been exceptional every, every every single time he's played. Before we go back onto the goal, Sam, I have to, I agree. I wanted to give Tom a shout out for the other night because yeah, excellent. In, that, in that number six role, I, I think that um, that is his role. I genuinely think that is his role. I think nothing, no, no disrespect to Jake Livermore. But he is basically a mobile Jake Livermore. I think Livermore is probably stronger in the duel and in the tackle, and sometimes his positioning is better. But the way Tom can tick the ball over and just play the right pass at the right time, drive with the ball, beat a man, create a bit of space, releases us to go forward, I think it's such an underrated skill because a lot of the time you just think, can you get someone in the middle who's just calm, gets on the ball, calms everybody down? And we've missed that in recent weeks. And it was the type of game where in the first half we did, in the second half we didn't have as much of the ball, so he probably didn't have as much influence. But when we did get it, he was the one who just calmed us all down and played the right pass at the right time. I can only really count him losing the ball once in the second half where he basically pu pulled a pass astray. But apart from that, I thought he was I thought he was our best player on it the other night, genuinely. I don't know if anyone else had some other shouts from out of the match, but I thought he was he was up there. Jamal Lewis, I think <clears throat> a song we have to mention is Daniel Batman because he made a couple of really big saves. And save at the end as well, 88 minutes or so. Brilliant double He's save. a weird one though, isn't he, Sam? Because when he plays well, it goes under the radar, I feel. But when he plays badly, it's the biggest talking point. Why do you well, think I'll, that is? Well, I'll, I'll be honest. I, I think it's people trying to force their agendas against Batman, putting it bluntly. Obviously, I respect people's people's opinions and stuff like that. But I feel like when people say Batman play, plays played badly, even I saw some of those shots the other night saying he should have done better with both goals. Like, what what on earth is he meant to do with either of them? I, I I feel like, and it's not just with Backman, it's football culture in general, that if someone's got an agenda against a player, and even then even when they play well, they just won't admit it because they'll look back to other things. And admittedly, I've been guilty of that. I think looking back on it, I was probably guilty of that with a certain Imran loser. I don't think I appreciated him when he did play well because I was sort of blinded by 
his poor performances. But I just feel like it's a case of that, that people are so stuck on thinking that he's a bad player that they don't appreciate him when he does play well. Yeah, Not fact, sure it's it's nil nil as well. No, I, I, I mean, Charlie, you're probably best to talk about the sort of individuals, but Bat- Batman was one that I thought, you know, and people did give him credit, but I was, as Sam said, there were still some people, and obviously Twitter isn't the metric of mm. everyone's opinion in the Watford fan base, but it probably went under the radar a little bit in terms of his importance of his performance, Charlie. Would that would that be fair in terms of the saves he made at certain times in the game? Yeah, yeah, I expect Dan to make those saves. We know he's a good shot stopper. What impressed me was just kind of his decision making in terms of distribution. What's that? This is job. <laughs> <That's his job. laughs> <laughs> um, uh, it's very um, good. Yeah, his passing was more impressive than it has been. We've seen previously where he's looked more nervous. He's just booed outfield, and it's just come straight back to us. But. I think he passed it short when he needed to pass it. He's clipped it to the full the wing backs when he needed to, and he just kept it sim- simple. So hopefully he can build on this um, and keep up the good performances until the rest of the season. Batman deserves a shout out. I thought the back three: Sierra, to Pollock, Porteous, and then Delhi Bashiru are probably my sort of standout players. Sam, we kind of touched on the goal there. Bio. Um, Charlie, do you want anything to add on that one? Just, um, Yasser Yasser Spree's cut back to Dennis was perfect. Um, mm. Like he had, he had one one place to put it, and that's just Yasser's bit of quality. Dennis maybe should have buried it really, but could see Bio there, the crow, uh, feed him and he'll score. So yeah, nice to see. But I think this second goal is what we want to talk about because that was just prime Emmanuel Dennis. What was it like, Jacob, being behind it? Yeah, it was it was him at his best. I think it's probably the best way to describe it. He won the initial header to knock it down. Then made that run down the channel. It's and when he the header, sorry, really That's nice right. bit of play from Matty Pollock. Kind of wins possession. He doesn't just kick it away. He kind of drags it back. He gets it back. And he played like a channel, channel ball to Dennis, who rises well to head it to Kombe, but go on. No, no, no. You're 100%. Because he played it with a nice bit of weight that Dennis could kind of quite easily cushion it back. And that's the sort of like fine details that I think sometimes we miss in the game. He didn't play it with a lot of pace, which meant that Dennis could get up. And to be fair, I didn't expect him to beat his man. And probably, I'd go as far to say, Dennis's most underrated ability is his leap. It's absolutely frightening for a guy of his size. Like, genuinely, the way he won that header the other night, and quite a few on few occasions as well, is was luck of a target, man. I'm not, I'm not, I don't think I'm exaggerating when I say that. Knocked it down, got it down the right-hand side. And the thing is with Dennis, some <laughs> guy at Sunday League today said to me, he said... The cameras are out. The Sky Sports cameras, Dennis is always going to turn up. And maybe there is an element of that, but he was a man possession that first half. Maybe because he knew he had that groin issue that he wasn't going to play the full 90, that he knew he could kind of just absolutely burn himself out until he comes off. But when he got one-on-one uh, with the Leeds, Leeds back line, just kind of shifted it away. Some people said, should Meslier be doing better? I don't really care. It was a nice shift out of his feet. Left foot strike. And that's Emmanuel Dennis, and that's why we brought him back. I think the most, probably the biggest talking point around Dennis, for me, is the difference it made when he came off the pitch. Because I felt we lost our out ball. We lost any sort of runner in behind, unfortunately. And it's not anyone's fault. If he's nursing a groin injury, then unfortunately, that's just the risk we we have to take. But I guess there is a conversation, Sam, to be had about the options we had off the bench, maybe. Because other teams could bring on not a like for like, but a player that can play in that role as well. And and Sam, we did see some comments from Troy about Dennis about the injury. What did you make of it? And this was before cleverly confirmed the groin injury. In fairness to him, yeah, I mean, I must admit, what I mean, I think Charlie, you must have put out a similar tweet. But for some with the groin injury, what is he doing doing a backflip as his goal celebration? I mean, if I'm the medical team, I'd be absolutely fuming with him. Just on no, Dennis's performance. Dennis, that's what you're going to get with him. That's I, what I, I know, I know. Danny I know. D, Sam, drink it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I thought Troy was a bit harsh, but there were parts that I did sort of agree with. I do think he can do more, to be honest with you. Um, I think while his goal was brilliant, and I think he makes us look like a better team, there were parts of his game that I still think need huge improvement. He doesn't pass. Like in the first half, there were about five opportunities where he picks it up in a central position. He's got Lewis bombing on on one side, Andrew's bombing on on the other side, and he just slows the game down. And then what he does is he did it once um, where he, Lewis was completely free. He slowed it down to come back inside. 
goes back outside to Lewis and then hits it straight out of play and shouts at Lewis for not getting the ball when that pass should have been made 20 seconds earlier. I just find that part of his game incredibly frustrating because his selfish side sometimes is brilliant for us, such as his goal where he could have released the ball, but he held on to it and scored a fantastic and got a fantastic finish. But at the same time, it does slow us down a lot. And that's what I think Troy probably means by he needs to be doing a lot more. I've got a question. I'll throw it over to both of you on Dennis. We know that he's on a big wage. Well, we think he's on, it's reported that he's on quite a big wage. Um, it's probably more than the rest of the players. If we had the opportunity to sign him and he'll be on a lot more wages than the other players, would you? No. I probably wouldn't. I probably wouldn't. I think the injuries for starters are a little bit of a concern. I think when I brought when we brought him back and I did that video and I was like, oh my God, this is the man to take to the playoffs. That really aged badly. The second thing is the injuries. I thought he was going to be fully fit when he came. Not fully fit, okay, fitness wise. But I thought there wasn't going to be these reoccurring things that keep popping up. I know it's early days, but I think it's just something to mention. I don't think Dennis was as bad with that sort of thing when he when he first came to us. One thing you get from him is the individual quality and star quality. And the second goal pretty much epitomises Dennis, I think, when he's at his best. Bearing him on Leeds, uh, kind of top end of the champ, there's a good, good chance they're going to go up. He ran them ragged in that first half, let's be completely honest. But I don't think it'd be the smartest move making it a permanent. I love him. I, I, think, he's, I think he's great. I think, to be honest, everything that was kind of made about him coming back and some of this sort of off the fields allegations about his character from what I've heard from everyone who works at the club he's really liked in the dressing room I don't think there's any sort of doubt that he's a liked guy I just think it's more in terms of on off um in terms of as you say Charlie wages going forwards can we really afford that uh, and also just the injuries are a bit of a bit of a problem for me what do you reckon see how the rest of the season goes. If he does what he did against Leeds another five times, then I'd be very tempted because... It'd have to be a good financial deal for me, I think. it'd have to, it, If you said to me now, he'd be on the same wages as most of the players or same deal as most of the players, I'd, I'd absolutely take it. I just don't know if you could really justify getting a guy back in. And how old is he now? 20, 26. Sorry. 26, OK. He's not, he's not the same player, though. That, I was so excited when he came back, and I was probably the most excited Watford fan. If you watch our videos back, um, but he's he's not the same player. I just feel like not playing regular football. Think he can get back to that. We saw that against Leeds. Like if he gets a run, if he gets a run of form and he's loved, that's just, like I know it's only been one game, but like we are so like I, I don't think I don't think Charlie, I don't quality. I don't think we're in the financial position to take risks on those sorts of players, though, because yeah. I don't think we can pay the money that Emmanuel Dennis wants with the off chance that he might come good. I feel like either we bring in players who are more towards the start of their career, or we bring in proven championship players rather than these players who are somewhere in the middle, like Emmanuel Dennis. Let us know, yeah. Emmanuel yeah. Dennis. Yeah, it's, it's you want to throw a grenade in there. <laughs> <laughs> we mentioned bios open at Dennis's goal. Obviously, Somerville's equaliser. Some people had a few questions over Kiembe, whether he should have got out to him quicker. I mean, we are. I'm not. I'm. I don't know. I thought it was harsh. I thought it was. I, I thought it was harsh because it's a, it's a great goal, to be honest. Two one at half time. We come out for the second half. We all knew it probably wasn't going to be in the, the same in the second half. Just number one, keeping the tempo, keeping the momentum, keeping that intensity. Uh, what changed second half, Charlie? I felt like it was a bit more of a disciplined, gritty performance. As you said, we didn't have a lot of the ball. Yeah. Uh, Dennis went off and for some reason, we just had no attacking threat from that, which I was quite surprised about. And I thought Tom tactically in the first half was spot on. I think like the mentality of the players and the application spot on. So Dennis goes off and we put on Kone, but it felt like Kone was playing as like a striker. And I just think positionally, he didn't know what he didn't know really what to do and was a bit confused and we just we had no attacking threat and we couldn't keep hold of the ball so it was every time we won it back either sloppy passing we were just giving it back and we were just getting waves and waves and I just what I, what I really wanted to see was Kone getting dropped back into the middle and maybe have Kaembe, Kone and Tom Deli as a free and ask Tom Deli to help out Ryan Andrews I thought Somerville needed double up in and 
Um, I don't. I think Ryan had a really tough game to this. He's playing probably one of the best players in the league. Um, but I thought he, he kind of he needed a bit more support, and I think Tom Delhi's played that right back. So I think that could have helped potentially because. I thought Kone was pretty kind of non non redundant. I don't think necessarily it's his fault. Him get. I think Tom was thinking we played so well in the first half. Let's keep let's keep the same straight same shape, and it'd be like for like. But I just think like like I said, seventy seven percent possession, and it was wave and wave. And I thought we defended pretty well, but you're never going to keep a team like that out for the, for that long. I, I like think. Yeah, I, that that was the only sort of criticism I had of. Of Tom and his, his maybe some of his decisions on the night, I think he got ninety percent of it right. I think his substitutions, when we look back on it, probably weren't the right decisions. And I think he'll look back on it and think, was that the right move at that time in the game? I felt the natural substitution was to take off Kiembe for Kone and then bring on Chatfordetsi for Espria as sort of giving a, give us a bit more energy in the midfield. He then brought Tom Ince on to play up front uh, with. With Bayo and then Rivic, who, who came on at the end, Sammy's uh, clever substitutions. What, what did you make of it? Because there was that was sort of the only uh, criticism that some fans had about uh, sort of the night as a whole. Obviously, not to win the yeah. game, but the substitutions were sort of pinpointed. Yeah, at the same time, though, I do think that they were the only subs potentially he could have made. Um, I can't remember who was on the bench off the top of my head, but this is I the mean, bench uh, straight down, just to jump in. So we had. Yeah. Tom Ince, Melita Rajevic, Ishmael Kone, Jake Livermore, Georgie Chaffordetsi, Ben Hayman, Mateus Martins, James Morris and Jack Greaves. Surprising, not, surprising not to see Livermore get on. Yeah, and we haven't seen him for a couple of a couple of, uh, couple of weeks now, have we? Um, we actually, I was actually saying uh, we were having a conversation about who we reckon would leave in the summer and uh, um, I was saying I, I could see, I don't think we'll keep Livermore on, to be honest with you. Um He's only he was only signing on a one year deal, didn't he? One year deal. Okay. Yeah. I wonder if perhaps because he's not playing, it's an indication that we're not going to keep him on at the end of the season. I'm not too sure. Um Georgie was think, probably still pissed. Yeah, I was gonna say we haven't done a video yet, but I... <laughs> <laughs> Georgie, no. honestly, Georgie was uh oh my god. Jo Georgie, I love Georgie. him. Absolute form the other night. Georgia qualified obviously for Euro 2024, and my my man was leading the uh, <laughs> the celebrations. <laughs> honestly, well, I'll tell you what, there's one thing to be excited about for next season is that we got Georgie on a permanent because I, I think eyebrows were raised a bit and we sold signed him for two million, but I think now in the new year we've really seen him come on, um, and I think it looks like a really really good deal. So fair play to Georgie, but I think we probably didn't bring him on because he had probably a couple of heavy nights out in Georgia and got back late. I think that's probably why Kone struggled as well, coming back late from international duty. Um, I thought Spirit at times was quiet as well. Potentially that played into it. Um, yeah, I, I think an element was it was, it, there were not many other subs he could have made really, um, other than potentially Morris coming on for Lewis when Lewis was tiring a bit. But I don't really see what Tom Ince offers us, to be honest with you. I think Ince coming on slowed us down a lot. Um, Rivic didn't have enough time on the pitch as well. Kone, we mentioned already, nothing against him. I just think he looked a bit lost in the formation. So I think it would be easy to be critical of Tom with the substitutions, but I think there's a lot of context that needs to be applied next to it. Yeah, agreed, agreed. I think there's a couple of things, as Sam said, in terms of the, the options we had on the bench. When Dennis goes off, there isn't a like for like. He's kind of having to make shift and move some people around. He maybe thought that Kone was the man to give us a bit of energy and injection up there as a number 10. But it kind of worked out that he started playing as like a second striker. It, it just didn't suit Kone for me. Um, but that's, I mean, look, Cleverly's hands were tied in that respect. And then maybe you look at, as you say, Sam, Georgie was probably still hung over. Livermore maybe hasn't played a lot of football recently. Mateus Martin, some people said, should have come on. But look, at the end of the day, it was very much nitpicking from, if, if we've got to be fair, and nitpicking on some of maybe the tactical decisions. I wonder if he, he, he would do anything differently cleverly in his first game, to, uh, Charlie. You, when he take a step, takes a step back and he thinks, OK, first two games, a really, really good return, getting two uh, four points, one win, one draw against Birmingham. In, and, and Leeds in, in two very different performances as well. I felt with Birmingham, it was very gritty. It was just about getting the result by any means. The definition of a six-pointer, I think he said to me uh, last Saturday. And in this game, the kind of it felt like a Watford team that kind of had the, the pressure I off a little. Have been that in, sorry, <laughs> <laughs> the, the pressure was off a little bit. 
because we are mathematically safe now, there's pretty there's almost no chance that we're going to be going down. There's no chance we're going to be going up. Um, well, how do you reckon Tom will reflect on those first two games going into tomorrow against West Brom as well? Yeah, he should be really proud. I think the week he, yeah. the work he's done on the training field and the message he's put across to get that performance in the first half was exceptional. So should be really proud. But in the same sense, like we just spoke about potentially substitutions, he would have learned a lot. So a uh, small tur- turnover. What well, we got West Brom tomorrow, which a completely different outfit to Leeds. They're a lot more defensive, really comfortable out of possession. Um, but they've got some really good players like, I think we spoke about on the stream before, like Jed Wallace and John Swift, really clever championship players. Um, do you think he's going to go, go with the same formation? I think so, yeah. I think we'll see changes, um, but I think and I think it, but I think it will be the same formation. Sam, if you need to go, by the way, mate, let me know. I could, me and Charlie could just st- stick uh, it. I hold, hold off. I hold off for five more minutes. Um, five, five more minutes. Yeah, We're gonna read, read a few comments. Just Sam, your thoughts for tomorrow? Yeah, no, I'm I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Um, yeah, not another away day. Uh, my penultimate away game for the season. Um, yeah, it's going to be a really really tough game. Obviously. I, th- I feel like West Brom are in a bit of a, an interesting position now with eight games to go. Um, they're pretty much confirmed for top six. I think there's something like, what, six points clear of of eight, of seventh. So they should be OK to see it through. Um, so I wonder if they'll p- potentially just try and get over the line now. We'll try new, a few new things, try out a few new players. I've said before, I think West Brom will win the playoffs. And I think Carlos Corporan is the best manager in the league as well. Um, so... It's a really, really difficult game, but another good opportunity to see sort of the levels that Tom Cleverley can reach. Key May player of the season, Carlos Corbran, best manager in the world. Sam is coming out with the hot text tonight. A few comments. Oh, I'll, t- I'll tell you what, another thing, seeing that Liverpool are on, uh, Liverpool won't be getting Xabi Alonso, I think they should go in for Corbran. <laughs> why, why, is that, why is that so funny? Speechless, speechless. That is incredible. Absolutely <laughs> incredible. Uh, yeah, I don't want to react to that one, Sam, to be honest, mate. I mean, uh, he has a, it, what, what's his odds? Hey, <laughs> Kev, ask, ask Grizz on, uh, on 90 min. Carlos Corbran. You know, yeah, oh, my word. Sam, that's incredible, mate. I've actually lost my words there. <laughs> I think I'm spending too long at the moment just reading books, doing my dissertation, to be honest with you. About Corbran in general? Just... <laughs> 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 right, a couple right. Of minutes just to wrap up thanks so much to everyone who watched this evening really do appreciate it just a couple more minutes um evening all thanks for watching ian my main points for friday night and by the way lads interject if you'd like any of the points want to bring any up uh who were those 11 actors playing in the first half didn't look like watford and where did uh the kumbayo learn to finish like that jesting apart congrats to tom cleverly uh, Charlotte says, pleasantly surprised how hard we pushed Leeds. It definitely felt like a one-point game rather than two points dropped. Absolutely agree. Um, big shout-out to the Chile and Pirlo. Back to his best in, in centre-back, Charlie. I know you, you, you're you a huge fan. Yeah, what a boy. <laughs> 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 he was great. He kept it simple. He would, uh, he would header his nan for, to win the ball. He, I love him. David says, how about Martins? I'm surprised not to see Martins when Dennis went off. He's had a tough second half of the season, hasn't he? Mm. Um, we've talked about the bereavement they had at the first half, which might have really rocked him. He's obviously from Brazil, so he's going to be incredibly homesick. So, look, uh, we talk about a like, player of the season. There was a point earlier on the season we were saying he was our player of the season. So, we know there's a player in there. Hopefully, hopefully he can refine his form. Charlotte says, Clev said Dennis was carrying a strain, so presumably that's why he pulled him off. Also, bearing in mind, we're playing in tomorrow exactly against West Brom. Interesting to see if Dennis starts all starts on the bench. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Paul does say first half performance was great, and up until Dennis went off, after that, our pressing attack dropped off in its intensity. I think that's a very fair assessment of the game, and I think that's about it. Someone did mention, Charlie, did you bring, up, bring out the uh, momentum bar last Saturday? For, uh, uh, it, it, would, it, would, it wouldn't have looked good from, from the rookery end, I'll just say that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, I think we'll leave it there. And, and just maybe lastly, close to the official manager job, lads. Maybe this is for a separate video after the season's ended. Awesome. Or you can check out 
our last video where we kind of ranked sort of potential what for managers. But lads, just maybe a better sort of way to wrap this up was feeling around Clevs being the next manager. Still no. People are, I mean, fair play again if you are, but getting too caught up in a narrative. Um, this is simply a new manager bounce and taking things back to basics. It's not a long-term solution. Do you know what? How, many, how many wins, Sam, until the end of the season for you to be convinced? If we win, I don't think... It's, it's difficult. It's, it's tough. I just wouldn't give it to him regardless, to be honest with you. I also, just for his sake as well, I just don't think for his progression as a manager, it's going to do him any good to have the Watford job full-time. So for me, I so I, I'm quite split on this. So for me, for me, for me, <laughs> the social clip of him, Arm and Kavaya celebrating on the touchline was genuinely what I go to bed dreaming about every night. <laughs> and I watched that and I Pulled thought, in. get it out, get the contract out, sign it immediately, give him what he wants. But then I also remembered that I don't think I'll be able to take it if he got sacked. But having said that, Tom cleverly leading us to the Premier League is probably what I go to go to bed dreaming about on a regular basis. So if that's going to happen, or there's a chance that happening, I'm game. But until then, probably. Do you know what? One thing I will, I'm going to, I'm going to commit to this now. Just lastly, I, I think it should be a guarantee that he's part of the backroom staff next season. How are you going to employ? Oh, this we could go on in a time. Yeah, it's a whole separate video. This. I'm oh, yeah. been already. <laughs> Let's leave it at that. Let's, let's chat about it if, we, if we beat West Brom. Yeah, sweet. Charlie, Sam, what a pleasure. Thanks so much to everyone who watched today. Uh, really do appreciate the kind comment, David. Top man. Thanks, guys. Brilliant as usual. Comedy horns. Hope you enjoyed it. If you're listening on audio, make sure to leave a review. Subscribe to WD18 on YouTube. Leave a like. Comment down below your thoughts. All that good stuff. And we will see you. When are we going to be back? Next week? Maybe. Might have any match reaction from the Hawthorns from Mr. Sam Yuko as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. On the spot, what a man. And we will see you then. Take care. Have a great week. Up the Ornits. And hopefully win a West Brom. You would.